Hi, I'm Dave. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the rear wheel bearing removal and replacement on the driver's side of my 2000 Mazda Miata, which is the NB series of the Miata. My approach is going to be to avoid renting tools and instead to take creative advantage of the tools that I already have. And if you decide that you want to do the same thing that I'm doing in the same way, I'm going to explain as best as I can along the way so that you'll understand. So, I hammered a good two hours on this hub trying to drive it out of the bearing using a sledgehammer and all I got was about three-eighths of an inch of movement out of the two inches of movement that I needed. So it was taking its toll on my hands and arms, my wrists especially. Uh, that sledgehammer is hard on you. So I abandoned that and I decided to take it to a professional mechanic who was equipped with a hydraulic press. And he was able to do the job for me at a cost of $60, so I was happy. And he initially tried to do it hammering just like I was doing it, uh, but he quickly realized that it was a losing proposition because that bearing was stuck. The bearing and the hub were stuck together and they weren't coming apart. So he took it to the hydraulic press and got the job done. Unfortunately, in order to take it to him to where he could work on it in a vise and in a, a hydraulic press, I had to take the dust shield off. And you can see I had to damage it. I had to cut some sheet metal and in order to get the thing off of there because it was all assembled like this. And this thing, of course, this hub, was stuck in there and so in order to get this thing out to where he could work on it I had to cut the sheet metal and take it out so I could take this assembly to him. So I am going to have to either replace this dust shield and uh, they're hard to find or I'm going to repair it, and I'm going to try to repair it first. All right, as you can see, I have repaired the dust shield, and I've done that by cutting and fabricating a piece of galvanized sheet steel and attaching it with pop rivets. Um, it's important to point out that if you have to do this, that you shouldn't have anything long like a screw sticking up in this direction because this is exactly where the heads of the wheel lugs are going to be spinning around. And so you don't want them to hit the screws if you use screws. So I've used pop rivets, which are very low profile. Another thing to point out is that I have cleaned these parts because everywhere that the new bearing touches the hub or the knuckle, you want it to be really clean. And I've also done that to the, old, the remains of the old bearing. And I'll explain that in a minute. What I used to clean these was carburetor cleaner and a wire brush. I'll also point out that removing the bearing on a Miata destroys the bearing and leaves part of it stuck on the hub. The mechanic removed that from the hub for me. It involved cutting and hammering it with a chisel, the bearing, the remains of the bearing, hopefully with minimal damage to the hub. Now, this mechanic did a great job of this for me and uh, it looks good to go. No damage, really, to speak of to the hub.
no noticeable damage. And it seems odd to me that Miata's design requires all of that cutting and chiseling, but that's even what the factory service manual says to do. So, whatever. Next, we'll go over the parts and the tools that we're going to need for reassembling all of this. First and foremost, we're going to need our new bearing. We're going to need a new oil seal. Uh, actually, a dust, it's called a dust seal, I believe. Uh, it resides on the back side of the knuckle, furthest inboard on the knuckle. And we're going to need a new snap ring. So I have those new parts. We're also going to need uh, some grease, and I've got some wheel bearing grease here for that purpose. Uh, we're going to need the outer portion of the old bearing. I'm going to explain that uh, in a bit. We're also going to need a three and a half inch hose clamp, which will fit neatly around the edge of that bearing. We're going to need an eight inch cinder block, a spring compressor, and this is a spring compressor made for McPherson struts. I think it's just the right length for what we want to do. And we'll need wrenches. I'm going to use my air wrench and impact sockets to put this all together. And then we will also need some uh, large washers and spacers maybe some blocks of wood. As you can see, the process of removing the old bearing from the knuckle caused half of its innards to be uh, pressed out of the bearing. And so it basically destroyed the old bearing as far as its usefulness as a bearing. We want to make sure that on our new one, that we do not put pressure on the inside portion of the bearing when we're installing it. Otherwise, the new one could end up just like the old one, damaged and unusable. To do this, we want to put pressure only on the outer perimeter of the new bearing when we're pressing it in. We have the perfect tool right here for doing that because the, all that's left on this side of the old bearing is that the metal at that perimeter right there and we can use that to press against only the perimeter of the new bearing. So I am going to use this stainless steel hose clamp to hold the bearings in alignment at that point so I will tighten that down and then by pressing on the old bearing right here, even if I press on the inner portion of it, I don't care. It's just focusing the pressure downward on the edge of the new bearing. Okay, now we're going to press the bearing into the knuckle. And it takes several steps to do that. You'll see off camera, I drilled a couple of holes in this piece of wood, this block of wood. This is a 5 8 inch hole. This is a quarter inch hole. And I have this lag screw that's going to go in the small hole. This is going to be a guide for the large bolt that we're running down the center of the hole for the bearing. We're going to put the screw into the we're going to put the screw into the block of wood as you see here 
and this is going to give us something to help keep the, uh, it'll be a kind of a guide for the uh, com spring compressor bolt. I think that went a little too far. We'll back it off a little bit. There we go. So you can see here that 5 8 inch hole is roughly centered in the bearing hole. I'll put that on its side and install the spring compressor through the 5 8 inch hole and up through the center of the knuckle. Next we're going to attach the old bearing to the new bearing. First thing I'm going to do is mark the old bearing as old. That way I won't get confused and accidentally install the old bearing into the knuckle. Stranger things have happened. We don't want that to happen. I'm going to secure these two bearings together, lined up as we described before, using a hose clamp. That way when we're driving the old bearing against the new bearing, it's going to remain in registration, lined up. There we go. I'm going to wipe down the surfaces that are going to be sliding against one another just to make sure there's no debris. I'm also going to put a slight bit of grease onto the surface inside the knuckle and maybe just a little bit on the I mean we're going to put it on both the bearing and the knuckle the surfaces that are sliding into one another not a lot but the uh, factory service manual says to use grease for this, so I just figured might as well use bearing grease. Kind of set it in place. I have a plate. This is a kind of like a washer, but it's a very thick, stout metal plate that's going to span all the way across the end of the bearing as you see here so that when I put the spring compressor on it's going to distribute force, the tightening force all the way across the face of the bearing so that it's not just mashing on where the uh, this little fitting of the spring compressor is touching. It'll spread it out just a little bit more hopefully to the edges of the bearing as you see here. So I'm going to now I'm going to put the socket which fits on the spring compressor, fitting it to my air wrench. I'm going to put the air wrench on full throttle. <laughs> Let's see what happens.
this point I'm going to remove the hose clamp because it's starting to get to where it would interfere. And I'll continue. Now from here, it needs to go in about another quarter of an inch. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. I'm not going to be able to see it, but we should be able to hear a difference on the way that it's uh, impacting and moving. My air compressor is having to catch up. So now at this point, I think we need to take the old bearing out, get it out of the way. So I'm going to have to loosen. And you can see the bearing is nearly there. There's a ridge just a little further in where the new clip has to install. So we still have a little bit further to go. So I'm gonna, con I'm gonna reassemble it here and we'll continue driving. Without the clamp. I did not put our flat plate on. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to mark, I'm going to give myself a reference mark here, about an eighth of an inch. From the knuckle, and then I'm going to watch that mark move closer into the knuckle until it about disappears. And I think that's about how far we need to go. disappeared so now I'm going to take this apart and look at the result again and 
The preliminary results say that oh, we have about a sixteenth of an inch to go. So let's do it again. And I'm going to make another little reference mark for myself here, showing about a sixteenth of an inch to go. And when that mark disappears, we should be in far enough to call it quits. I do believe that should be enough, so I'm going to take it apart, and we'll check our progress. Well, it looks close enough that we can probably try to install the clip, the retaining clip. Looks to me like it's all the way in. Okay, next we're going to install the snap ring or clip, whatever you want to call it. I have here both the old and the new one, the new one that I bought. They're slightly different styles, but that's how it works. First, I'm going to check that the groove fits with a ring, and I'm going to take the end of the old snapper ring and stick it into the groove and run it all the way around the perimeter just to make sure that the groove is clear all the way around. And it is. So that was successful. Now I'm going to take this new one out. I also have here some jumbo size snap ring pliers. The little handheld ones are not going to work for this because the holes on the snapper ring are about an eighth of an inch in diameter. They're, they're much larger holes than most small snapper ring pliers fit. And they're about one and a quarter inches apart. So you have to have a jumbo size tool in order to fit that. And this one is Make sure that it's seated all the way around.
And it is. Snap ring is installed. And now we're going to put the dust shield back in place. It's not really rocket science. Just line it up roughly the way that it originally was. I'm using these cutouts and these bosses for the two uh, disc brake caliper holes, mounting holes, as a guide, figuring that it should be pretty well centered. And I'm going to use a mallet to drive this on gently. Don't want to bend anything. I think that'll do it. It's pretty securely mounted, not going anywhere. Our next step is going to be assembling the hub into the bearing. And uh, the way these are going to go together, the orientation according to the way you're looking at it is like this. They're going to be pressed together. We're going to be using our spring compressor just like we did before to squeeze all the parts together. The challenge is going to be that we want to keep the pressure of the tool focused on only the inner part of the bearing, keeping it away from the outer part of the bearing. On the hub end, we're going to have the pressure focused right here. And we're going to use that same square flat plate that we used before, sandwiching that in between the spring compressor fitting and the hub. So just like that, and then it will go together like that. So on the knuckle side of the equation, we have a different apparatus that I have concocted in order to focus the pressure where we want it. I've got these large flat washers, just off the shelf steel washers, designated UAJ. I think what that means is that they are nominal three quarter inch flat washers. And they're almost two inches in diameter. And I have only two of them so I had to come up with something else and I found this old bearing race from another bearing job that I did. So that'll stack it up to get it uh, spaced up high enough to be clear of this uh, cast iron knuckle. To keep it away from the outer part of the bearing when all of this is pressing, I came up with this. It's a 3 8 inch wide piece of two inch PVC conduit. In other words, I cut a little sliver of PVC two inch conduit and it's just the right size and thickness to do what we want. It keeps the, it keeps the tool away from the outer part of the bearing. So these pieces will fit neatly inside it and the spring compressor will go just like that and bear on the inner part of the bearing. So let's put that all together and get started. Okay, as you can see, I've got this all together and ready to go. One thing I did not tell you is that I uh, cleaned 
and I, I wiped off the uh, the surface of the hub which is going to contact the bearing and spread a thin coat of grease on it just like we did earlier when we installed the bearing into the knuckle and I've checked here to make sure everything is centered properly so it looks good I'm going to stand this up in my cinder block so that we can go straight vertical on tightening it and I'm going to be able to look underneath from time to time to check my progress because the hub surface that's going into the bearing is visible right under there. So here we go. Going quickly. It's going very nice and quick. It's almost there. We're almost done. I think that's it. Seems like it. Maybe we'll give it a, a little bit more and see if it progresses. I believe that is it. We will check it by taking things apart and seeing how far the hub came up to the end of our bearing here. Stand by for a report. Okay, it turned out that we needed to run the uh, tightener about five seconds more to get it all the way in, which it did. You can see right here the hub has come all the way up to where the curved corner of the bearing is. So it, it's all the way forward just as it should be. And if you look on the other side, you can see that uh, the gap has been pretty much eliminated between the hub and the knuckle. So that's great. One thing that remains to be done before this is ready to put, be put on the car is we have to put the seal into this space on the back side of the bearing. The seal has a rubber lip and a metal side. So feel of it, if it's flexible, that's the rubber. If it's not, that's the metal. And the metal side is what goes into the metal of the knuckle. Now to drive that down in there, I found the ideal tool is a can of Popeye chopped spinach. As most car people know, there's no substitute for muscle. I'm going to use that and a mallet. Drive it down to where it's all the way seated. And that is seated. Now this whole thing is ready to be installed onto the car. Okay, now we're going to reinstall the knuckle and hub assembly back into the car. I want to point out a little minor problem and an easy solution to it. These two rubber bushings that I'm pointing at here can be uh, kind of uh, difficult to deal with 
because they don't leave very much space in between here for the bottom part of the knuckle to fit back in sometimes. If you have a problem with that, use a block of wood and a pry bar to give this space a little bit more space. Just pry on it a bit, which mashes the rubber back into the, the tube that it's situated in. Just mash it for a few seconds, and then, as quickly as you can, put the knuckle back in, and uh, it should give you enough room. But you also have to put the axle splines back onto the splines of the hub, as I'm doing here. Lining it all up and putting the bolt back in all the way through. And the same on the top up here. Might have to work at it to get the holes to all line up before you can put the bolt in. Now, it's a good idea to use anti-seize on these bolts and nuts because these bolts and nuts are notorious for getting corroded, especially up in northern areas where you have a lot of salt used on the roads in winter weather and things like that. I don't have a problem with that car, uh, with, with this car, but... Um, at any rate, I'm going to put a little dab of R RTV on the threads. I don't have any anti-seize handy. I'm just going to put a little dab of RTV on the threads before I put the nuts back on the bolts. Seems about right. I'll check the torque on those later off camera.
is about right. The axle needs to protrude out far enough here that the threads of the axle nut can fit on it. So we may have to do a little work to uh, get the axle worked out as far as it needs to go. Okay, now I'm now I'm giving you a little bit better camera angle so you can see what we're trying to accomplish here. As it is, the axle is not protruding out quite far enough for the threads to catch it, or if it is, it's just barely. So I'm going to reach in with my left hand here, grab onto the axle and pull on it, while with my right hand I have a mallet and I'm going to be tapping on the axle. So maybe the combination of pulling on it and hammering on it will work it out to where it protrudes out further and there will be enough threads visible. It's barely moving a little bit. Seems to have come out about a sixteenth of an inch. It's working through those splines. And I think it came out far enough to where we can get a nut on it. Okay, now it's time to reinstall the brake disc rotor and the brake disc caliper. So I'm going to slip the brake disc back onto the hub. On the calipers, they will be flopping around loose. What I think works is to use a screwdriver, pop them apart so that they have the gap in them. And on the back side of this rear caliper, there's a clip. I'm going to grab onto that to keep it spread apart from the outside caliper so that I can slip it over the rotor. And once you get it over the edge of the rotor, it makes it, it's not that difficult to slip all the way on. Now I need to line up the two bolt holes on the back side because we've got this boss on the knuckle that lines up with the bolt holes on the caliper. I'm going to get the screw located on the hole. Working blind. I think it's started. Let's see if I can get my ratchet to Continue. And the same with the other hole.
Okay, so the caliper and the rotor are back in place. Okay, the last part of our procedure is to install and tighten the axle nut. Now, you can see I've reinstalled the wheel on the car, lowered the car, gotten rid of the jack stands and the jack, and I also put the nut on the axle and I tightened it. I tightened it the best I could using an air wrench and then I followed that up by using my torque wrench. This thing is spec to go to 180 foot-pounds of torque or more. That's just kind of my target. And this torque wrench only goes to 150 only. So I did the best I could, to, and right now this thing is torqued to 150 pounds. Now I'm going to augment that the best I can, just kind of guessing as to how much force to put in uh, beyond that 150, using the wrench that I broke it loose with, this three-quarter inch, um, one and one-quarter inch 12 point socket and I'm using this 40 inch long cheater bar that we used earlier this is perilously close to my car's paint so I'm going to keep my hands between the pipe and the car and let's see if we can Increase the torque. That's about it. I got this uh, notch, the previous notch on the uh, nut. As you recall, it goes into the groove that's cut in the end of the axle. Well, with that last little push on the wrench, I got that the previous notch very, very close to the groove on the axle. So I think that uh, this is back to where it was previously, which I will presume that that was the correct amount of torque. So I'll say that this is torqued in to the spec that we wanted, and it's good to go. The thing that remains is to use a punch to put that notch or that that divot in in the lip of the axle nut put that notch back into the groove on the axle so I'm going to line up my chisel to do that Give it a couple of whacks with sledgehammer. And there it is. The uh, divot is going down into that notch on the axle, so it's secured. The only other thing left to do is to put the center cap back on the wheel. And the the job is done.